A SpaceX capsule has delivered four astronauts to the International Space Station, part of a NASA crew swap which will allow Butch Wilmore and Sunny Williams to return home after nine months stranded on the orbiting lab. It follows delays and aborted attempts to bring them back to Earth, a mission given greater urgency by President Donald Trump since his insistence uh, insistence to, to, uh, since taking office. Let's hear now from one of the new arrivals, NASA's Anne McLean. Hey, Crew 10 has had a great journey up here, about 28 hours to uh, get back up to the space station, and I cannot tell you the immense joy on the, uh, of our crew when we looked out the window and we saw the space station for the first time. Uh, returning for a couple of people, very first time for a couple of people. Um, and let me tell you, that is such an amazing journey. Uh, you can hardly even put it into words. And Houston, thank you for uh, tuning in this early morning. It was a, a wonderful day. Great to see our friends arrive. So thank you so much. Well, we're now joined by Olivier Songhi, who's Space News Editor-in-Chief at the Cité de l'Espace in Toulouse. That's a big science discovery park focused on space flight in the French city, which is known for its aerospace industry. Thanks for joining us. First up, I just wanted to get your reaction to what we've been seeing aboard the ISS today. Uh, does this mean that the pair are finally going to come home? Yes, as planned, I would say, after it was decided that, we'll say, that they will stay in the space station. And, you know, uh, Barry Wilmore said in February that he is not stranded. It's just that their mission was extended. And as he said, he, he was with Senator Williams prepared for that kind of... Uh, not very well planned thing you know it was because their spaceship the boeing uh, the boeing spaceship uh, was not deemed enough safe to bring them back so nasa said okay you stay aboard the station you part of the next expedition and you will be back with the next crew and over and that's happening I mean, of course, they're going to say the right things uh, from from a sort of NASA PR perspective in these broadcasts. And, you know, of course, they're prepared for very long stints out in space. That's part of their training as astronauts. But nevertheless, expecting to go up for just a couple of weeks and ending up there for nine months must have been quite difficult for them. Difficult, but it's part of their job. And I don't think it's only NASA PR, you know. They repeated it. And uh, when you see Senator Williams... She was there for eight days, and she became, for the second time, commander of the International Space Station. When you are an astronaut, motivation is very strong. So I don't think it's only NASA peer stuff. OK, so we can, we can take it at face value. OK, I'm on board with that. However, we, we've seen it get political in recent weeks. Does this not put the kind of mission in a bit of a, bit of, bit of a difficult spot when you've got the president saying things like they've been abandoned up there deliberately by the previous president? Yes, your true declaration by uh, the president of the United States made this thing political. Uh, we explained that to our visitors, we say, what's going on? Is it a, a, a spacecraft to save them? No, it's just a crew and over. However, again, I will say what Wilmore said uh, during an interview, say, from my standpoint, politics is not playing into this at all. Okay. <laughs> And in terms of, I think, you know, one, people down here on Earth must be quite curious as to what they've done to fill their time up there. Have there been a kind of enough experiments to be taken care of? What have they been actually doing up there? Oh, there was always a lot of work to do, you know. They have been part of the Expedition 72. There is always at least a 200 uh, science experiment on board the space station. You have to maintain the space station. Sanita Williams did an EVA, you know, uh, uh, going out of the space station. Always a lot of work. You know, in the International Space Station, the workload, uh, your agenda, is by five-minute slots. So a lot of work to do. And let's be frank, for Boeing, it, it is an embarrassment for them. Their rival has had to step in where they could not perform. Well, step in, not really, because, uh, in fact, NASA made that they were part of the next crew and over. But the problem is that NASA didn't think the Starliner spaceship from Boeing could bring them safe. However, at the beginning of September, Starliner went back to Earth finally, so... Well, it, of course, that's not good news, but perhaps uh, 
there will be a next flight for the uh, Starliner, and then it will be a full flight. Now, the other big space news this week I want to touch on, Elon Musk sending that he'll send a humanoid robot to Mars at the end of next year and could land humans on Mars by 2031. We know that he's prone to making predictions which don't come to pass. Is this the same kind of prediction? Well, you're right. He is making predictions. Most of them are happening, but not necessarily in the time frame. I mean, he said he will do uh, rockets... Uh, reusable rockets, and that's true. Uh, he, he's doing a very fine spacecraft. The Crew Dragon is an excellent spaceship. However, going to Mars is a very hard, uh, very hard mission. So we will see. Uh, I would say an automated landing is uh, is something that can be done. I don't know in the time frame, but a manned mission is really something very difficult. Excellent spacecrafts, excellent satellites. That's in no doubt. SpaceX is dominating and kind of at the forefront of the space industry. Um, does Europe need to step up and become more competitive here too, particularly given how much power is concentrated around this man, Elon Musk, at the moment? Well, Europe is doing what it has to do. You know, Ariane 6, for example, is uh, it's because Europe, we need our own launcher so we don't rely on others. That's not, I mean, it's not really to be the first on the commercial market, clearly. Uh, however, when we are not speaking about the same money. You know, NASA is a $20 billion budget. In Europe, we don't have such a budget for civilian space. That's, uh, we need a political will that say, OK, let's put more money in space, and we will do the same. Simply, we have the competences in Europe. And this, is this perhaps a topic where France feels it has been doing the same, the right things and pushing this line for a number of years? Um, and just now is the rest of Europe waking up to what France has been saying all along? Not only, you know, France is one of the countries true that is pushing the space agenda in Europe, but there is also Germany, Belgium, Italy, for example, Almost half of the modules in the International Space Station were built in Italy by Thales Alenia Space. So we have all what we need to do great things in space. What is lacking is perhaps more political will. In terms of Ariane 6, then, uh, let's, let's talk about what's happening there. Because the, 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 the second flight was just a few days ago. What is this mission for? What's it going to accomplish in the future? Well, the, the second flight was to put uh, what we call a spy satellite, a French spy satellite, military satellite. So it was very important. Uh, there are four more missions, and one of these missions is for Amazon. So, you know, even Americans are buying IAN-6 flights. And we can say, <laughs> so it's very interesting to we see that they trust the IAN-6 launcher. What is more important for the moment in, in Europe with Ariane 6 is not to be the first on the market. It's to have our own way to launch satellite without having to ask to others. That's very important. All right, Olivier Songhi, thank you very much for speaking to France 24. It's a pleasure. Thank you.